Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. In today's session, I want to talk to you about exception handling. So what is exception handling? At a very high level, exception handling is a way to limit your code from failing by isolating certain parts of your code that may actually throw an error. So for example, if I throw in a variable and call it you know, x or whatever it is, and I try to divide by zero, you may get a division by zero error. Or if I'm looking to get a number and somebody enters in letters, I may get a value error. So what I want to do today is exemplify some of that stuff. We're going to go ahead and build something where the objective is for the user to go in and put a number between 1 to 10. If the user enters a number outside of the range, tell them that, hey, wait a minute, you've entered something outside of the range, and then ask them to re-enter. And if they enter a non-numeric value, tell them to enter a number. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, we're going to go ahead and create this input variable, but I'm going to run the code without having any exception handling, and I'm going to show you what I mean by isolating the code in certain areas. So let's go ahead and put in an input variable. We'll say number is equal to, and because we want this to be a whole number, we'll say int, uh, we'll say input, enter a number between 1 and 10. All right, something very simple like that. And then we'll say print the number. All right, so let's run this little code here. So enter number between 1 to 10. I enter 5, prints the number, great. But what happens when I enter a number like 45? It still prints the number. It's outside of the range. And last but not least, if I enter non-numeric characters here, it actually throws an error. And what happens in a scenario like this is that when I actually throw an exit code 1, what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and stop your entire code from running. So even if you have, you know, 100 lines and two lines of code fail, it's going to make all 100 fail. And you don't want that. You want to try to isolate it so that if I do throw an error in those two lines of code, it goes back to the user and says, hey, correct yourself because we want the entire 100 lines to run. So how do we go about and handling this? So, so this is where the concept of the try, accept, and else block comes in. So this is the way it works. You use the word try, and what try is going to do is it's going to go ahead and try to validate whatever your entry is to make sure that it meets the criteria. So in this case, one of the criteria I have is this needs to be an integer because I've defined this as an, as an integer. So try is going to say, all right, whatever the user inputs, it has to be an integer, and if it's not, I'm going to throw an exception, which goes to the next line where you would see something like accept, and then you would say print, this is an error. So if we run this code, and I do something like this, it's going to say this is an error. It's going to run the exit code 0. And if I put this in a loop, it's going to ask me to go ahead and run this number again, especially if the code is dependent on it. But whenever you're writing your accept, your accept statement, you see that this has a little squiggly thing under it. And what that means is it needs more information. It actually wants to know what kind of an error is this? Is this, am I dividing by zero? Is it a value error? What kind of an error is this? So if I take these statements back out and had the code the way it was before, and if I throw in a bunch of characters, it actually says this is a value error. So it'd be good to actually specify. And the reason is when I'm printing out my error, it's easier for me to know what kind of an error it is. It'll actually print this line for line. So I'll show you what that means. If I go back and do try, and I tab this back out, and I go back and put accept value error as E, and then I say something like print E. When I actually run my code, and I put in a whole bunch of gibberish, it's going to give me that error, but it's going to run exit code 0, which means that everything's executed properly. So any code above or below, mostly below, should still continue to run. Now, it's, it's always good to have this kind of a practice, but I also like putting something in English just so I know what's happening here. So I can actually go ahead and say something like, you entered a non-numeric value. And then I can still have this print if I want on the side, just like this. So if I go ahead and hit print, It'll say you entered a non-numeric value, and then it'll print this as well if I wanted to. But I mean, it's 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 good practice generally to do that. 
And I will sometimes actually print out the exception uh, when I'm, especially when I'm coding something from scratch and I need to know what the error is. But once I've got it up and running, sometimes I don't actually put this, especially when, I mean, when a user is going to put in 10, they're not going to know what this means. So I try to make it meaningful to the audience as much as possible. All right, so it sounds like we've handled the first scenario. The problem is, after this person's entered something that's non-numeric, I want him to go back and enter this again. So how do we do that? If you remember before, this is where a while loop is actually great. And a while loop is an infinite loop until it meets its condition. So I can say something like this, enter in a whole bunch of gibberish, and it'll ask me again to enter a number, essentially, which is great. So this is what we want it to do. Now, if I enter something like 5, it's still going to go in a loop, and I'll tell you why. If you see, it's actually still asking me to enter more numbers, and that's because I haven't in included some kind of a break. So after I've met my criteria, I can do something like break, and if I rerun this, put in a whole bunch of gibberish, and put in 5, and it breaks. So it actually says, all right, you entered a, an, an appropriate value in here, so I'm going to get out of the while loop. But now we have one more thing that we need to solve for. So we've gone ahead and we've solved for this one, which is if they enter a non-numeric value, tell them to enter a number. But now how do we go and solve for this one? And that is if they enter something that's outside of 1 and 10, so if I entered 0, I actually don't want the code to run. I want to be able to throw some kind of an error. And so this is now where our good old if-else statements come in. So what's going to happen here? is I can add in a third element here called else. So this is called a try except else statement. And so what this means is that everything in the else statement won't, will not run until everything in the try and accept statement is correct. So in this case, I can do something like if number is greater than 0 and number is less than 11, or I can say equal to or greater than 1 and less than or equal to 10, but I'm just doing it this way, it's fine. I can say print, and then I'll do a formatted statement, and I'll say something like, you picked a valid number, and then we can just state the number what they picked here. Something like this. Or I can say else, if it's outside of this condition here, then I can go ahead and say print, you entered something outside of the range 1 and 10, something like that. And then we can say try again. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens in this scenario. So if I hit print, so scenario number one, let's test it. And that is, if it's outside of the range, ask me to re-enter something. So let's enter 0. Oh, but it's not supposed to do that because I forgot to take this break statement out. So let's take this break out because it shouldn't be here. The break statement should only break now after I've met this condition. So let's put the break here. So essentially what's happening is I put in a number. Let's say I put in a non-numeric character. It goes through this. It says, wait a minute, you enter a non-numeric character, enter it again. And it will keep doing that loop until I've entered a numeric character. So once that condition is met, now it's going to say, all right, have I entered something less than zero? or greater than 10. And if that's, or sorry, less than one and greater than 10. And if that's the case, it's gonna say, wait a minute, I'm not gonna break out of this loop yet because you haven't met this criteria. So I'm gonna go to the else statement and say you entered something outside of the range, try again. And it's gonna go back to the top as well. So when I finally meet this condition between zero and 11, it's gonna print this for me and then it's gonna break out of the loop and then we're good to go. So let's go ahead and try this again. So gibberish, we'll enter 56 said you entered something outside of the range, 1 and 10, try again, I'll enter negative 9, that doesn't work, so now if I enter 5, it should say you picked a valid number, 5. And so that's it, that's how the try accept else statement works. Um, sometimes people just use try and accept, if I don't need to pass this number down somewhere else in the code, it'll, it'll be fine, they can just use try and accept. If I don't have this else statement, this if statement down here, this code of block, is not going to recognize number. So if I take else out, for example, I'll show you what I mean, and I go ahead and unindent this and try to run this, it'll run. So it'll run in the scenario where I enter a big number. It'll run in the scenario where I enter a valid number. But when I enter something that is 
gibberish, it's going to say, I don't know what number is. And the reason is because this value for number is not getting, getting passed down to here because it just ends over here. That's it. That's why it's important to have the else statement in the try except block so that you can actually go ahead and take that value, which is number, and it stays within this block code because the try except else work together. So again, if I run this again, gibberish, and it goes ahead and does exactly what I want it to do. So this is a little bit about exception handling. The other types of exception handling you may find is when you divide something by zero. And I mean, if you had a scenario where you're entering something, you know, that had a division by zero, I can quickly do something like, you know, accept zero division error is E1, just right under the same code block, you've entered something like this. All right, so now that I've added my zero division error, I said as E1, you cannot divide by zero. So what happens when I enter five and I enter zero? It's going to say you cannot divide by zero, division error. So it's going to say go back to the top and enter number and number two again. So enter these two values again. So it's going to have to go and say seven and then five. And then it can say, all right, you picked the valid number seven. So it's saying you're going to pick a valid number that's seven. That's only because that's what's printing here. But if you look, I've also printed number three. So it's actually doing the math for you. So this is essentially how you add in another exception on top of this one over here. So you can go ahead, there's plenty of uh, exercises and examples online, but this was going to be a quick tutorial for me to show you how exception handling works. If you found this, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment, and we will see you in the next video. Take care.